the beat rolls on. Welcome back. A great night to look back on quite possibly the greatest BYU football team ever. You can argue that with your friends if you want. 20 years ago this month, BYU completed one of their best seasons. 14 wins at the time was an FBS record, and they capped it off with a Cotton Bowl victory. The only New Year's Day bowl appearance and win in BYU history. I had a chance to sit down with some of the key players on that team and look back on a season to remember. They come on the road and play a team as talented as BYU at their home stadium is really difficult. Texas A&M win seems to set the stage for everything. How big was that win? How much fun was it to be a part of that game? That was really, you know, the catalyst. That was, you know, a huge game, biggest game I've ever been in. Historically, for me, it was important because we'd taken a beating a couple of years back when Ty was quarterback, and I think he had his, uh, he got injured. And uh, that stuck with me, and I, and I remember that just as a, a, a fan of BYU. For me, that win was, was to right <laughs> the wrongs of the past, but even the score. Uh, I don't think anybody thought we were going to beat Texas A&M. They're coming in from the Big 12. And they just were so above us, you know, they were just so uh, put off that they had to be with BYU, and so it just fueled our fire. And you know what I mean? And we took the field. Um, I, I definitely don't think they were ready for the, for the physicality of, of that game. We had to play, so we went out and played. and kept playing, kept pounding it out, no matter what. What do we gotta do to win game? We gotta throw the ball, throw the ball. Run the ball, run a special teams, whatever it takes, we win the game. I definitely think they underestimated, you know, the altitude because they were, they were gassed. Towards the end of the game, you just, you know, you line up and you look at them and, and you just know they're beat, they're done. Uh, they got nothing left. As hard as they want to play, they just can't do it. To talk the way that they did in the manner and the fashion was even better because uh, they didn't go back with that, with that manner and that fashion. They held their, head, their heads low and they licked their wounds and that's the way you want to send them. You want to send them back like that every time so that they remember what type of ball we play here at BYU. We're, we're not the same team as last year. I think teams really need to look out. Uh, I've been saying it all along in camp. I said we're, we're much more focused, we're more united, and we're strides ahead of where we were last year. I think it just lets the country know what kind of a team we really have, a team that we knew we had, and now people are finding out about us. So much confidence, you're 2-0. and You go into Washington. What happened in Seattle? The Washington game was a wake-up call. It breaks free. Touchdown. Two scores already. They got us on a good day. We were on a national stage. You know, everything's laid out in front of us. You know, we win that game. We're in the, we're in the top. We, break, we really break into the top five. We played a good game. We spotted them 14 points, I think, right off the bat. Maybe we got a little bit of pride for or something. I don't know. I don't know what, what happened with that. But the thing is about it is, like, you know, it brought us back down. It's like, you know what? You guys can be beat. We realized that we, you know, that we could be beat and we, maybe we weren't as good as we thought we were. But what are you going to do when you do get beat? Are you going to just, you know, call into a hole? Are you going to put yourself back out? Are you going to fight? We went into the rest of the season with a, with a different mindset, and uh, I think it, it taught us how to finish games. How were you able to take that loss and turn it into a positive? Because from there, you guys took off and you just almost, you know, until the end, went right through that whack schedule. It's easy to say, yeah, we were the better team, but they got us on that day. Um, but I look at it a different way. The better team is the team that executes. We had potential, and they showed us by beating us our potential. It helped us to understand the pieces and the components that we had to, that we needed in order to go out and have the season that we had. It's hard to stay motivated and stay focused, but I think all the guys did a nice job of, of just staying focused. Steve was a field general. He was the architect. He was the coach player on the field, calm, cool, and collected. He was the leader. If he trusted you, he was going to he was gonna uh, showcase you. Very rarely did I see uh, Steve get flustered. Oh, usually he's throwing me the ball. I'm just wanting to catch it and not disappoint because I respected him. I respected his game. I respected his leadership. We had two great tight ends that they had to account for which opened things up for the receivers, which opened things up for the running game. How good were those two guys at tight end? Oh, they were the best. I mean, you had left and you had right. I'm going to punch you with the left, I'm going to sock you with the right. Their play caused you to want to go out and do special things. You had fearless wide receivers, Kaipo, KO, 
made some big catches all year. How good were those guys? We don't drop balls here. We don't wear gloves unless it's 35,000 below zero. We do things the right way. That's what was expected of you. And you were, by gosh, you were going to do, you were going to make sure you carried that torch forward. You were going to catch the ball, every ball thrown to you. You were going to play hard. You were going to run precise routes. And you were going to play with a never say die attitude. Uh, they, we just had so many weapons, and I think everyone complimented each other. We were just smacking people. A pretty good return man, too. Yeah. And every time he got the ball, yeah. someone thought he was going to score a touchdown. Somebody, what were they thinking? I have no idea what was wrong with that. The electrifying die is on his way. Well, there's an aura about it. I, I, you, you, and you look at the numbers and how many touchdowns I actually scored. And so that was amazing to be a part of, uh, to be an integral part of the success of the program and all of those wins, to be a part of that uh, from an integral standpoint was really special for me. I think there's an old adage somewhere that says defense wins championships. Freitas is hammered and the ball is loose. You hit so hard. <laughs> I mean, there was an intensity with that group that you don't always see. We wanted to be recognized and we wanted to be talked about the same way they talk about uh, BYU offenses is, is we wanted people to know that um, they were in a game and, and regardless of the outcome, they were going to walk off the field knowing that they got beat uh, physically and because that hadn't been a, a hallmark of BYU defenses in the past and so we wanted to be a physical unit. At that time, you think of BYU, you think of quarterbacks, you think of throwing the football, but the Brian McKenzie, Ronnie Jenkins backfield was awesome that year. I think Jim McMahon came one time and said, what, what is this? This is not BYU offense. This, this, this is not <laughs> BYU football. We don't run, we all saw this running. Getting the end zone is, is all I wanted to do, is score touchdowns. But there's something about taking uh, a win, demoralizing your opponent uh, with the running game that finishes teams and it sends a message to your future opponents. Lavelle, Norm Chow just adjusted to th their talent. They, we, he has two talented, three talented running backs and they just put us in position to be very productive. We fed off each other um, inside, outside, whatever it took to uh, run that ball, we, we did it. The running duo really came together against Utah. What did it mean to you, for you to have play such a big role in, in a win over the rival? When the Utah team came in, I was standing in their goal, in their goal line, looking at them and like just staring them down. I'm like, it, I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready to play. And like, if you ever watch that game, the first time I touched the ball, I think I break for 40 yards in the first play. And I think that set the tone of like, that we were going to run the ball down their throat. And even Lavelle said, well, we're going to change it up. We're not going to throw the ball. We're going to run the ball. Yeah, that game was everything. Um, for me personally, that was, uh, that was like the Cotton Bowl. You know, the running game was working. There was no need to stop. And uh, myself, Brian, we were just giving Utah the business. That win at Rice Eccles with those guys talking and, and the stakes being as high as they were, it was almost like those, those losses were erased because the stakes were so high. Ma! Yeah! Give me a kid! Ma! So the end of the three-game losing streak to Utah, you're division champs. You go on to play Wyoming. WAC championship game is wild. It's like a championship game is supposed to be. We had the chance to go play for a New Year's Day Bowl. And, you know, if in Wyoming, if they win, they go to their, their bowl game. If they lose, they don't go. So everything's on the line for everybody. We had an adversity, a setback. Um, Etula got hurt. We had to take a second emotionally to regroup ourselves. Um, realize what was at our at our disposal as far as our arsenal was concerned. We had to compose ourselves. After the Tula Mealy went out, we really wanted to win that game because, you know, like, man, you know, this guy, you know, he's awesome. He blows his knee out in the championship game. It's like, how we come back from that? You know, it was like, man, we got to go out here and win, man. We got to go, I don't care what it takes, we got to go out and win this game. They were playing with a little more ferocity because Tiller thought that and felt that they were not treated fairly in the previous game, the game the previous year when we played them here. Through that whole game, I mean, I, I mean, I got smacked around, I got hit, I, mean, I didn't feel anything. My body was numb. I mean, literally numb throughout the whole game. I know they took that safety there at the, at the end of the game and, you know, again, um, if it works out for them, everyone's going to say that's a great call, you know what I mean? But it didn't work out, and so I'm sure there's a lot of skeptics as far as uh, that play is concerned. To have a guy go out there and do it, he, he, his nerves were steel. 
He steeled his mind. He went out there and he made those field goals. And just I remember seeing his demeanor and his attitude on the field, and he was confident. Boardman. It's over. The Cougars win it. The funny thing is that you know we, we were in some close games, but. I never really thought we were going to lose any of them, no matter how close it was. And the Wyoming game was, was close. I just always thought we was going to pull it through because we were just on that roll of, of winning. Yeah, we just stayed in it and fought and fought and, uh, and found a way to win. You know, this is what a football player lives for if you like football. I'm asking this much. How, how do we get a regular blue on our end zone? We got aqua again. <laughs> so you get to the Cotton Bowl. That is, how special was that for you? as a senior to get that chance to play in a New Year's Day bowl game, something BYU team had never done. We had a blast. The atmosphere, the teammates, it was intense. It, you can feel it, you know, uh, it, and uh, like everything goes quiet. You had a touchdown that game, right? Oh, yeah. Had a touchdown, and that was the field general once again commanding his team. He said, uh, this guy plays you close, burn him. He looked at me, I looked at him, he said, burn him, and I got him. I mean, whenever people look at the stat sheet from the Cotton Bowl, they see Shane Muirbrook and they see how many sacks? I get a lot of recognition for, for that. There was a, a, part of, a part of me that really, um, you know I mean, played with a reckless abandon and, and really trusted all my instincts where kind of up until that point, you, um, you know, you kind of withhold those things and, and you play within the scheme. We, we go out there and, and play that game to the point of like, you know, to the very last play where Omar makes that interception, and we win that game. <laughs> Offenses score points, but defenses win championships. And what, what better way to go out in, in a philosophical form than that way? Let your defense finish it off. Those guys over there was, was uh, confident and talking a lot, you know, a lot of trash, but, you know, we came out with the victory. And you know what? I have no respect for those guys. I'm sorry, Craig, but I have no respect for that football team, and that's it. I'm done. There was some... Uh, some some rabble rising going back and forth between the players. You know, they were sore losers, and so we, we stood our ground a little bit. You know, we were gracious, we were respectful, but we were not going to be disrespected at that point. We took the game, we won it, we had more tools in our toolbox than you guys did. We knew we had, we had uh, put our stamp on, on the program and, uh, and college football at that point. That we continue to keep each other up, and, you know, the bumps and the bruises and, you know, the injuries and stuff that... It had to be something there more than just like wanting to win. It had to be something more of like uh, the brotherhood and, and loving one another and pushing one another and being a, a motivator of each other. Best BYU team ever? Well, I think so. I mean, you know, the, everyone's uh, got their arguments, but um, I don't know of any other teams that played on the first. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. I think they were comparing our team to the 1984 team, and even some of the, even Bosco said that our team was better than their team. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a, a team more talented uh, than the '96 team. I, I, I'm anxious to be replaced. I'm ready to be put down on the second level, in the third level. I'm ready for somebody, some team to come up and, and replace us and to carry it forward and to, and to get gold rings and to get another there plaque and, and to revel the day when they'll be sitting here in their reunion and we can sit back and say, job well done. In the 1996 team finished the season ranked fifth in the AP poll, the second highest season ending record in school history. More than a dozen players on the team made it to the NFL and countless others are coaching the game today.